I mean, it's one thing if a photograph or any kind of work of art is really, really well made. I mean, there's an awful, awfully lot of good technicians right now in Chelsea Galleries making really amazingly good paintings that sell for a lot of paint, uh, sell for a lot of money, and, and and photographs too. But the bigger issue for me is, you know, why? Why did you do it? And 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 you know, does does it move me in some way? Maybe in, for some works it'll move my intellect, and some works it'll it'll move my emotion. But it's that kind of dialogue with students because. I mean, one of the things that frustrates me with students is they often don't know the history. And so they might see something and think that it's, you know, an incredibly original thing. And I'm like, well, no, you know, somebody did something very much like this in the 70s or 80s. So I think sometimes students don't bring that broader history. But on the other hand, students bring a, you know, very refreshing point of view towards things. And so I think, you know, ultimately you end up teaching each other. And I, th I think that's, that's sort of the best case scenario, especially with, with artists where it's, you know, really, you know, very much about, about trying to get the artist to do his best work. You know, I, kind of the way I go is that when I take the picture, that's me talking. But once I make the print, then I, I try to see what the photographs say to me. Now, for me, these pictures and their arrangement basically are plotting two journeys. One is the history of Mexico. Um, and the other is a metaphysical journey, which has to do, well, Elizabeth talks about it a bit in her introduction and so on. And, and I, I think had that not happened, had I not started seeing those photographs as, journey, as two kinds of journeys, there are probably a number of those photographs that would not have been in there because I wouldn't have thought they would have stood on their own. But for me, they, they work very nicely in, in the form of two journeys. Um, and Elizabeth picked up on that. I think. In fact, do you want to talk about? It? Well, I, I I think what's really nice is when when an artist matches their subject matter to their their medium. And in the case, you know, what Bill was talking about is these uh, these cameras are light swallowing cameras, and they capture accumulations of time. And so many of these photographs are about either history or journeys. So, I mean, there's, there's at least one photograph that alludes to the Spanish conquest of the Americas. There's photographs like this one that talk about uh, Mexican rituals that are, you know, that are quite ancient but that, that live today. It's about life in San Miguel, which still continues to have a lot of, um, uh, of uh, echoes of, of, of history and tradition. It's about the border, the border region, and how that continues to, to change. So there's this idea of of history and, and overlay and tradition. And then, as Bill mentioned, it's also about a spiritual journey. So in the fact that he is using this type of photography that literally accumulates time, it seems to me that it's a, it's a very appropriate way to, to try to um, interpret these things. And I think that's why we kind of they kind of grab us, because they, they do seem to kind of carry this sort of, uh, this sort of weight of history or this, this idea of memory, I think, also. Uh, within so many of the images. You'll, uh, to really follow this, you'll all need to buy a book. <laughs> it's, it's, it's easier to get it. There's a lot more if, in the book. <laughs> if you have the book. But as an example, though, um, it starts with an image of a face in a hand. Um, the face is actually from a santo in Mexico. The hand is... Fran Christina's, and Fran is here. Fran was the drummer for the Fabulous Thunderbirds, and he held in some. But the title of the picture is The Seeker, and that, from a metaphysical standpoint or a spiritual standpoint, that stands for all of us. Uh, from the standpoint of the history of Mexico, you know, it was the Spanish seeking a, a new world. It, it goes from there to... Um, a picture which is used twice in the book called the eternal return which is i mean not you know part of some metaphysics is that reincarnation people come back and they leave and then they come back and then they leave and then they come back and so on. that picture is actually there <coughs> twice in the front then you go through the two cycles and you go through a death sequence and then right at the very end the next to last picture is the eternal return again. And the picture after that is of our pregnant daughter 
holding her stomach, uh, and it's called The New World. And, and, I, and that really works for me. So these things, I mean, I'm not trying to be shove them in anybody's face or not, but it is how my mind works. And, and, and those pictures work for me on those bases, including the history. So, but you know, a good picture, whether it's a painting or a photograph or a drawing or a poem or whatever, what's important is, is what they say to you because art really, the best art mirrors what you need at the moment you're looking at it. It's not that it tells you anything. You know, it's helping you tell yourself something you knew, just forgot you knew. And um, I keep pointing at Keith because Keith's work really does this. Um, more questions. I'm starting to pontificate now. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry, Keith. No, yes, ma'am. Thank you, man. <laughs> Keith? Well, my, my question is for Stephen. Uh, I'm struck, I've always admired your writing, but I'm struck that you, by your own admission, you don't have a, a great depth in the history of photography, and this is a, a remarkable decade of coherent body of work that you were immediately drawn to. And my question is, uh, do you find any correlation between, uh, you write fiction, That's a great question. Did everybody hear it? Sure. Uh, Keith was asking, is there any correlation between writing, which Bill also does, is a master at, and, and the process of writing and, and the process by which Bill created these pictures, which is just these long duration exposures. Uh, and uh, I mean, the answer I think has to be yes and no. I mean, <laughs> writing is a, uh, is a much more uh, intellectually active thing it has to be because you have to you know get the margins right and everything when you're when you're typing but it and you have to you well not bill bill <laughs> special case as always <laughs> but it uh, I, I, <laughs> yeah, all right. but I think in in some ways I mean I'm not one of these people who believes that that you write unconsciously but I do think you uh, you keep your uh, your aperture open, and and you know it, it takes me uh, often half a lifetime to develop the idea for a book, and you're you're just waiting f for these thoughts and images to sort of gather enough force to register on the little you know photographic paper in your in your mind, and uh, so I think it's 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 very much uh, similar in that way is that you're a kind of uh, you're sort of actively searching out your subjects like Bill does in, in these photos and you're also passively accepting the sensations that, that sort of stream through and, and then, you, then in later you make sense of, of, of that and, and try to either in the, uh, in the dark room or, or in the editing process. Uh, and you know it's fascinating to me, speaking of editing, that um, my favorite photograph possibly that Bill has taken with his Tragaloose cameras is not in the, in the book. It's, a, uh, it's a, a wonderful image of a sea turtle skull 
on the beach. I think he stole the sea turtle skull from David Everett. I'm not sure. <laughs> Borrowed it. Borrowed it. Uh, and broke it. <laughs> and thank you for mentioning that. <laughs> David's here. Uh, but it, 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 sort of, it, it sort of reinforces what he was talking about, that there is a, a theme, whether it's, you know, you now know what the theme is. I think you speak about it pretty openly. But I, I would guess at the time you were, you, were, you were starting to put together this book, you didn't have a, a real sharp, coherent idea of the theme. You were just going mostly on what I did, felt by right the time together. I was actually putting the book together, I did. But uh -huh. when I was making the pictures, I didn't. There's a wonderful phrase, which is, how do I know what I think until I see what I say? How do I know what I think until I see what I say? And to some degree, that is th the story of these pictures. You know, I'm just by feel moved to take a picture of this, and then later you look at it, and then later you look at four of them that you took at different times, and all of a sudden they make little groups, and they seem to, you know, whereas one of them's a word, three of them become a sentence, ten of them become a paragraph, you know, and you didn't, you didn't know you knew that, but it is some part of you. I think, and this is what writing is. I mean, you know, that all of a sudden says, "Here, here's what you think." You know, you weren't conscious of it, but here it is. Boy, that's fun. You know. Well, in the dark room, I mean, you know, they are, they're pretty much straight images. I mean, I do, you know, burn and dodge and so on. The chemicals, uh, Mary Levy, who's here tonight, was my great companion in the dark room for many years on these Trigalusis pictures. Um, but, you know, I mixed my own chemicals. I came up with that toning stuff. But I love the dark room, but there's but there's not real manipulation going on other than just this darker, this little lighter. You know, it's pretty straight stuff, really. Faustinus. Any picture of the white gardener? <laughs> you know, um, on the wall in the jail. <laughs> well, Connie. You know, ignorance is bliss, kind of. <laughs> um, I, I assume most of you have either seen that church in, at Rochester Tiles or seen pictures of it. I mean, it's probably the most photographed church in the United States. I tried to photograph it a number of times, but um, I never got anything that said more than, well, here's a church at Rochester Tiles. So I came home and I made a camera um, that was a, the equivalent of an eight millimeter lens, though of course my cameras are no lenses at all. But that means it literally photographs like that. I mean, if I took a picture here, it'd get my feet. Um, and, and, you know, so I made a camera think, okay, will this do it? And, and for me, it did. Um, and it's the back of the church, but it's a huge adobe structure. Um, it is surrounded by buildings. There are high lines and some, but this camera is under all that. So, you know, and I really like that picture. I think that's probably the best picture I've ever made. I couldn't hear Mark. Have y'all all seen it? Yeah, the, it, that is, that is a room in the bull ring, that, and there's always a gurney in there and, and a medicine cabinet. And that's where they take bullfighters who have been gored or trampled or whatever. And, and so it is, in fact, the room where bullfighters die. Now, there's a guy on the gurney, and you've, I'm, I'm assuming you guys know which picture we're talking about. Now, that guy is one of the following. He is either a bullfighter who's been gored, 